Welcome to our lecture online. Just to make sure we understand how to do these, we'll show you a few more examples starting with this one. Now sometimes you need to, th need to stop and think just a little bit before you start trying to work the problem. Here, when I look at these two terms, I look at the one on the left, I see 12 divided by 4. If I simply divide 12 divided by 4, I get 3 and I end up with this 6 times the square root of 3. Over here, Notice that if I divide 3 and 9 by 3, I get 1 over the square root of 3. Well, I don't want the square root of 3 in the denominator. However, if I simply take a look at the denominator alone, and I take the square root of 9, which gives me 3, then I end up with just the square root of the 3 in the numerator, and then both terms will have the square root of 3. Well, you may not have quite followed what I've done, but again, it illustrates that sometimes you may want to strategize and see what happens. So let me show you what I was thinking. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide 12 by 4 and get 6 times the square root of 3 plus 21 times the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 9. I'm going to separate them. And then notice if I take the square root of 9 and get 3, then I end up with the square root of 3 in both terms and I can see that the radicals then are the same. So this can be written as 6 times the square root of 3 plus 21 times the square root of 3 divided by 3 because the square root of 9 is 3 and then 29 divided by 3 is simply 7 so this is equal to 6 times the square root of the 3 plus 7 times the square root of the 3 and then you realize you can simply add them because the radical portions are the same so this is equal to 6 plus 7 or 13 times the square root of 3. Now my wife who sits behind the camera watching me do all this said you know what you should show them Another way in which this can be done to see that you end up with the very same result no matter what approach. She's a mathematician, so she knows what she's talking about. So, this is how you could also do it a second way. So, let's rewrite the problem. 6 times the square root of 12 over 4 plus 21 times the square root of 3 over 9. So, let's say that instead kind of thinking ahead and saying, okay, this could end up with the square root of 3 in the numerator. Well, what if we simply reduce the fractions in each radical? And so this would then become equal to 6 times the square root of 3 plus 21 times the square root of 1 over 3. And then you say, well, I can simplify that by separating the numerator from the denominator. So this is equal to 6 times the square root of 3 plus 21 times the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 3. And then you would be compelled to, well, rationalize the denominator. And where's my red pen? My red pen disappeared. Ah, here it is. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. So we can rationalize the denominator. And then it would look as follows. 6 times the square root of 3 plus 21 times the square root of the 3 in the numerator, and the denominator, the square root of the 3, times the square root of 3. Wow, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? That is equal to simply 3. And then I realize I can divide 21 by 3 to get 6 times the square root of the 3, plus 21 divided by 3 is 7 times the square root of the 3. And now we can see that the two expressions are like, because they have the same radical. So this is equal to 6 plus 7, or 13 times the square root of 3. So, as you can see, there's multiple ways in which we can do this, and that is how it's done.